Welcome everybody to Unminding. Nice to see you, Soul. Hi, Pyrrhus. Hi, Nature. Welcome, Chris. Hi, XRP. Hi, everybody. And hi, Mum. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Very good. We're we're an international podcast as I'm in Bruges at the moment. So I'm from I'm live from Belgium. Yeah. You're back in England and Yeah, I haven't gone anywhere unfortunately, but nice that you have. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been been really lovely and yeah, looking forward to tonight talking about relationships. Um I'm just gonna share and wait for a few more people to come in. Yeah. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a really really peaceful week. Um, we haven't really caught up that much, and it's been um, yeah. It's, I'm really looking forward to. We've got some interesting questions, and tonight's going to be it's going to be a good one. Well, they all are really, but yeah. Thank you for all all of you supporting us, and we 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 wouldn't be here without you. It's yeah, it's really nice to all connect with each other every Thursday. Special thanks to Soul as well for being our wingman within this project so yeah oh good thank you darling hi everybody um yeah we just thought this was such a great topic because whether it's in a love relationship it doesn't really matter we're all in relationships with people in different ways um so it's something that's it we've been meaning to do it for a while actually we've said for a little while we'll do one on relationships and I think it might we might even end up doing a couple on relationships because it's such a huge area um there's so much to see um in our relationships it, it's it's quite interesting how um it's the area where we can get really triggered is in a relationship and it can be the area that we don't want to look at ourselves and we want to put the blame out onto other people or make it about another person um, instead of using it to reflect on ourselves. But we'll go a little bit deeper into that. But thank you again, as, as Jem said, thank you all for being here. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing that we get to do this every week and we get to chat to everybody and, and, and really kind of share what we're seeing and, and share what Jem and I saw that really helped us um for those that are interested in what we teach it's called the three principles i've been teaching it for quite a while now um about nine years i think um since i found it um the three principles are mind consciousness and thought they are the universal blueprints behind life they help us to see how and why life appears the way it does um, as we explore them, we begin to see that they are the forces responsible for really everything that we experience in life and all our psychological experiences. You know, everything that goes on, on in our mind comes from these principles. Everything that we experience in life comes from these principles. Um, understanding them then transforms the way we experience life. It gives us a greater freedom. And a deeper, con uh, a deeper connection to life, really, and a lot less fear, a lot less worry and fear about our experience, a lot less worry and fear about how we're showing up, how how we're going to feel about something. We start to understand where our feelings come from, because these three principles do create all of our feelings. So when we see that, we stop worrying so much about the world creating our feelings. We stop worrying about um whether we're going to be upset by a certain situation if somebody's going to upset us or if we're going to it, it, you know if we're going to get triggered you know it, it takes away a lot of the triggers that's the beauty of this um what, what what it does is is we begin to see that once our experience is is seen as coming from us and only us the world loses its power to control us or to to really make us feel bad um, and that actually reflects onto relationships as well. So these three principles that we teach, they can sound like, well, how can that make a difference in my life? But they, you know, they really, really do. And what I might read out at the end is is um, somebody sent me something this week that's someone that's been listening to Unminding and how much it's changed his life in the short time that we've been doing it. And I think it's really important to point out that it really does create change because I know when you first hear about it, it can feel like, 
how you know what difference is is understanding three principles and energies behind life gonna make um but it's completely transformational it was for me it was for Jem. It, it is for my clients it has been to, for some of the people listening to us and and tuning in every week and and that are in the, t- the telegram chat as well so yeah and, and i think relationships is such a great topic because as I said, we all have them with different people. It doesn't always have to be about love. You know, it doesn't always have to be about personal romantic love. You know, it's always about love, but it doesn't have to be about romantic love. But we will explore romantic love quite a bit probably on this call because, again, you know, that's probably one of the main triggers in our relationships can be through um, falling in love, you know, and not getting what we want or getting what we want or our insecurities. Um my view is that we're, you know, and anyone's welcome to argue with me, but my view is that we're probably here to, to learn how to love. Um, or maybe to how to reveal the love that we already are might be a more accurate, accurate way, of, way of explaining that. Um, but we get so scared. We, we often do the opposite. We're kind of counterproductive. We, we want love. We want to experience love. We want to have romantic love. But we get freaked out, you know, especially if we've been hurt in the past. Um, we, be- we can become inc- incredibly protective. And what we do is we kind of opening up and seeing something more deeply and allowing ourselves to really experience all the joy that love love gets and not worry about being hurt and allow ourselves to be vulnerable. vulnerable. We actually do the opposite. We close down. We protect there's areas that we, you know, we, we, we don't want to, we don't want to feel that pain. We're scared of feeling pain, but we all know that pain is a part of life. So instead of shutting, shutting down and narrowing the bandwidth of experience and limiting ourselves, how about what if we open up? What if we understand that feeling has always come from us, will always come from us. It doesn't come from outside of us. The person, yes, is the object of your desire, is the object of your love, but is not creating the love within you. The love only ever comes from us, okay? So when we begin to see that, again, it can become easier to navigate because we stop projecting so much. You know, we stop saying, there's a person, I, I love them, I want to be with them, and they have to love me back, and they have to, they have to act in a certain way for for me to love them and that's so interesting because what we start to uncover in this understanding is that there isn't actually a set person we're all thought feeling and and the experience of thought feeling in the moment so where thought is is how we're going to be so where our personal thinking is is how we're going to show up and experience life so if I'm in a low mood and I'm caught up in my mind, that's how I'm going to project. That's how I'm going to project onto life. That's how life is going to appear. If I'm in a light mood and I'm open, that's how life is going to, going to appear. So, so when we see this about ourselves, which we've done on a lot of the other calls, we begin to we've begun to look into this. We've begun to see, okay, so what I'm always experiencing is my state of mind. And I'm projecting that out to the world, yeah. So that's true for other people. That's true for the people that we're in relationship with. They're doing exactly the same. So we see that thought creates reality. And and, and we see that that thinking can make us feel a bit crazy and seem a bit crazy at times. When we're really believing thought, when we're really caught up in thought, that thinking can really... Um, grab us and we can react to the world and, and we can show up in ways that maybe aren't helpful well, that's true for the people in your life too so again what what begins to happen is that we see that we have many different states and we start to see that the other person has many different states and, and what we can do is we can stop taking that so personally we begin to see that if someone's in a low mood and they're being shitty with us you know, that's probably because they're in a low mood and nothing to do with us. They may be projecting onto us, but we know because we understand this system of these three principles that what they're actually doing is nothing to do with us. So that makes relationships so much easier. Now, look at the extremes that we can go to in in a relationship. It's always fascinating to me that we can really love someone and then 
it, it, that can turn to hate. Now, I I think I'd like to think I've gone beyond that. You know, I mean, I've got my ex husband actually staying with me at the moment, so I I I tend naturally to have not really done that in relationships. But you do see it a lot. You see that the person that that, that you that someone really loved, they now really hate. Now, the essence of that person hasn't changed. You know, it, it's what's changed is, is the relationship may have changed, but what will have happened is a lot of projection will have happened in that relationship. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of needs will have been unmet. Yeah, and there would have been a lot of resentment, and we see that over and over again, and and it's so unnecessary because that when we see that our needs can only be met by us. We don't project them onto the other person. Now, of course, we have requirements and we're going to have needs in, in a relationship. I'm not saying we shouldn't. But what I'm saying is if there's if there's ones that really feel that if that isn't met, I'm not OK, that's probably an area where you need to reflect on yourself. OK, because, of course, we want to do things for people in relationships and we want to do them to do things for us. That's that's completely natural. But if it's an area where you feel really stuck, that might might be a problem. And also if there's an area where you feel really protective, that's also somewhere that might be a problem that you need to look at. So we, we start to change how we how we experience the relationship, but also how we deal with the triggers that come up in the relationship. So instead of feeling upset and triggered and projecting it onto the other person, now you may do that momentarily, I, I can still do that momentarily, but there'll be a point of inflection, there'll be a point where I go, hold on a minute, you know, that that was me, that was my expectation, that was me creating that, Yes, it would have been lovely if they'd have met that expectation and, I, and I'd have got what I wanted, but that's not happened. So what can I learn from this? What can I see more about myself from this? Because what we're often not seeing is that what's changing is our thoughts about the person. The person is probably behaving in, in, in many ways how they generally behave, but sometimes our expectations are high Sometimes they're low. Sometimes our state of mind is high. Sometimes it's low. And it's the same for the other person. So if you get two people in a low state of mind and you hit a bump in the road in the relationship, that's going to be really problematic. So so it's it's all about raising consciousness. It's all about seeing who we really are. Because often what we're not seeing, we're not seeing someone else change. We're seeing the self change. It's It's what we're seeing. You know, it, it, it's not the person. It's it's how much our ideas of the person are constantly changing. The more that we see that reality isn't fixed, the more we see that we're not fixed, the more we see that other people aren't fixed. We don't have to put them into categories. We don't have to expect them to show up a, a certain way. We can see the fluidity, the fluidity of ourselves, the fluidity of the, of the other the fluidity of the relationship, it's going to have moments of expansion and joy and, and wonder. And and then it's going to have times where it can be quite difficult. And again, it's all completely normal. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it, it's so interesting. There was, um, I'm going to read something because I've really found it fascinating. Um, and I thought it really pointed beautifully to really the principles and the teachings and and I don't think this person actually knows about the principles um it's something Joni Mitchell said about relationships and she said I don't know if I've learned anything yet but I did learn how to have a happy home but I consider myself fortunate in that regard because I could have rolled right by it everybody has a superficial side and a deep side but this culture doesn't place much value on depth we don't have shamans or soothsayers, and depth isn't encouraged or understood. Surrounded by this shallow, glossy society, we develop a shallow side too, and we become attracted to fluff. That's reflected in the fact that this culture sets up an addiction to romance based on insecurity. The uncertainty of whether or not you're truly united with the object of your obsession is the rush people get hooked on.
I've seen this pattern so much in myself and my friends, and some people never get off the line. But along with developing the superficial side, I always nurtured a deeper longing. So even when I was falling into the trap of that other kind of love, I was hip to what I was doing. I recently read an article in Esquire magazine called The End of Sex that said something that struck me as very true. It said, if you want endless repetition, see a lot of different people. If you want infinite variety, stay with only one. What happens when you date is you run all your best moves and you tell all your best stories. And in a way, that routine is a method for falling in love with yourself over and over again. You can't do that with a long time mate because they know all the old material. With a long relationship, things die, then are rekindled and that shared process of rebirth deepens the love. It's hard work though and a lot of people run at the first sign of trouble. You're with this person and suddenly you look like an arsehole to them or they look like an arsehole to you. It's unpleasant but if you can get through it, you can get closer and you can learn a way of loving that's different from the neurotic, romantic, love enshrined that you see in movies. It's warmer and it has more padding to it. I just think that's kind of perfect. I, I mean, there was no way of me saying that better. So that's why I read it. Because, you know, when you really see what she's saying there is that... <laughs> to really get to know someone, to really have a depth of relationship is a deep acceptance in all of them, you know, in all of the, all of their aspects, in all parts of them, in, in, you know, love, love the bits that you don't love. You know, when you can do that, when you can see beyond what's presented, what the bits that you want to love and you can see beyond that and that, and you can see that the, the, the person's anger or the person's sadness or, their idiosyncrasies and you and you go, oh, I love that too. You know, that's a, that's a really powerful place to get to. And I do believe it's completely possible. I do believe that we all have the capacity to have that relationship. I just think it's very difficult because we, we've become so conditional. And, and un, you know, unconditional love is true love. You know, ultimately, the only thing that ever wants anything is the personality and the ego. That's the one with the requirements. The true self that we point to in this in this conversation has no requirements. It's not seeking for anything. It's just completely at one with what is. It 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 knows that it already has everything within it that it needs. It has the total capacity for love. It has the total capacity to give. But again, it, it's it's so interesting that we have these triggers around love that we, we we really try to protect ourselves from it. You know, so many people get hurt and then shut down and 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 they won't experience it again, or they try to hide from it, or they won't really let go and love fully. And 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 that's just so unhelpful to us because again, we're 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 limiting ourselves, we're limiting life. It can be terrifying to surrender to love, but it's one of the most amazing things that we can do. Now, you know, when we're talking about relation, relationships so far, yeah, of course, we're talking about the romantic relationships because that's very much the area where we all look at when we think of love. That's the area that we look at where we get do get more triggered, but we can get, you know, we can have difficult relationships with other people. Um, and we can have the most unconditional, beautiful love with other people too. Like, you know, my, my, my love for my son is unconditional. There's nothing that he could ever do that would stop me loving him. You know, it's such a great teacher to, to have that in your life, to see what unconditional love really is. And then to really try to imagine or see what that would be like in a, in a romantic relationship. Because, Again, it is it is possible, you know. Again, I'm not taking away the fact that we will have requirements and wants in a relationship. Of course, we will. You know that's natural. But if at its core, it can be that this unconditional love that we know does exist, then the relationship can weather many many storms. You know what we do though is is we project this defense mechanism. 
And it's like we, we believe the false reality. We, we, we believe our bullshit. We, we, we think our needs aren't being met. We think we're not being loved. And we're not just seeing that maybe that other person is in a, is in an unusual place in their mind at that moment. They're, they're not in, they're not in their capacity to love. They're caught up. So it doesn't mean to say we should dump people or move away from people. It, it's like just, just, uh, just understand, have compassion, you know. And this isn't, we're not talking about people in abusive relationships here. They're, those, you get the fuck out of those, okay. We're talking about how we often ruin very good relationships because of our insecurities, okay. This isn't about, you know, if if, if, if you're getting beaten up, you know, this isn't that. This is, you know, there, there, there's relationships that are incredibly unhealthy, but ruining good relationships is something we've all probably done because of we, we've believed something that wasn't true or we've really just followed our insecurity instead of following our hearts. So it's it's like, don't forget who you are. Don't forget who the other person is. You know, there, there's so much more to us than the personality. And, and the other thing that um, I find really interesting is the concept of trust in relationships. So we often think that we, we, we really have to trust, we have to trust a person. And, and I'm not sure that that's ever really 100% possible. I think that can lead to more insecurity because we're projecting our well-being onto the person. We're saying, I, I'm trusting you. And, and if you break my trust, then I'm not okay. And what, what I'm talking about here is maybe we're all maybe we're always okay, or maybe that's not where it's at. Maybe we don't need to build trust within the person. Maybe we just need to trust that the universe has given us exactly what we need from the relationships in our lives. So instead of looking outside of ourselves for security, there we're placing it within ourselves. We're placing it in something deeper. We're not putting it in another person's hands. We're saying, okay, we know the nature of life is, is inconsistent, that it's changeable, that things come, things go. You know, people leave us and can be taken away from us at any moment. But actually, if we're, if, if we're placing all our well-being in, in that outside, in that person, we're, we're almost allowing ourselves to be a victim instead of being empowered. When we see that what we have within us is is always okay, and then we can see that whatever relationship we're having is actually perfect for our our relationships to be exactly as they are, for because we're always living in the unknown. But the mind wants to know; it wants to, okay, that person is the person I'm meant to be with, and I'm going to be with them. And you you project your future onto them, and your well being onto them, and. And and it's it's like your mind wants to know it wants it set. So I need to know that I'm going to be with this person, and 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 that's it. And but it's not true, and we never know. But we can really grow from from challenging those ideas to not resisting to to not resisting life to saying okay, I'm going to see what happens here. I know that I'm okay, so I can actually enjoy a relationship because. I don't have to have this concept of trust in another to be okay in the relationship. Of course, I want to trust them, you know, to a certain degree, but it can't, you, you know, you you can't put it outside of yourself. The whole of this understanding that I'm teaching you is all about coming back to you, about seeing the experience is always coming from you. So what's unconditional love? It's just loving someone and it's okay what they whatever they do. If they hurt you, maybe you don't want them in your life. They do something really nasty or really bad. But ultimately, you, you probably can still love a person from afar. You know, it, it's, it's such a strange area to kind of talk about because there's always a yeah, but. Yeah, but what about that? And people go to extremes and you know, they couldn't love that person. Um, and I and I truly believe b before thought, before any of our bullshit, before anything that our mind is telling us in that deeper space that there is only love. So we, then we don't have to worry about what we love and who we love and 
it, it, we just know that we are it. And, and that's a beautiful thing, you know, to really begin to see then that, that you are everything that you are looking for. Again, what pressure of a relationship to know that you are already it. It doesn't have to come from the other person. See, see, if you're not a fixed person and neither is the other person, what you're seeing, how do I explain this? So, so your moods distort your thinking and your thinking then and your moods then dis distort your experience of the other person. So are you really seeing the person as they are or are you seeing them as you are? Okay. And, and and I can tell you, it's always only one thing. You're seeing them from where you are. You're seeing them as you are in that moment. It, it's not them. Now, I know that in, in you know, in, in my relationships, it can be, I can react very differently to the same thing. There can be something that happens and I will be completely cool with it. And that same thing can happen and I will be upset about it because it's coming back to me okay so this is this is where we are it's relationships do not cause the pain and unhappiness you feel okay god what's that Eckhart Tolle quote it's so brilliant let me see relationships do not cause the pain and unhappiness you feel they bring out the pain and unhappiness that is already in you like how perfect is that you know, and so then you can really use a relationship to evolve, to grow, to heal. You know, you can you can you can use those feelings as signposts for an area where you need to reflect, but you need to see more deeply what's true and what's not true, because no one else is responsible for your feelings. Okay, this this th that realization ends all the blame. Now, there will be moments of falling into it, but then there's a moment of realisation where you step back from it and you see. And, and again, as we talk about every week, you become present. You see that you're love. You understand um, the triggers that when you do get triggered, they, they may trip you up for a moment, but that unresolved pain when it, when it, when it comes up will be something where you get to see more deeply that, you are not thought, you are not feeling, there's something that you just experienced and that is always changing. What you are, what you are is something more. You know, what, what you are is much deeper than the, the, the shallow layer of experience that presents itself in the moment. So yeah, so relationships are really, really interesting because it, they are an area where we, we either go, I've got friends that have to be in a relationship. I've got friends that will not been in a relationship for years. I mean, and, and it's so interesting. It's that it's, it, there's, there's, there's a need or there's an avoidance. And it's like, what if there's that perfect middle ground where we don't avoid, but we don't project need. And, and we just have this experience of, of relating with another person. And, and we... And we go through that and we allow that person to be themselves and they allow us to be ourselves. And, and, and those trigger points we just work through together. And that potential there for that relationship to me is, is kind of a really beautiful thing. Um, that, that's somewhere where we can really learn, we can really grow and we can really help someone else do the same thing. Because... Ultimately, as I said at the beginning, to me, that's what we're here for. We're here to reveal that we're love and we're here to evolve and we're here to, to kind of reflect and, and, and see what's true and what's not true. So I'm going to ask Jem to come in and see if she's got any points or anything she'd like to say on that. Thank you, Moles. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting just from a sort of personal journey because um, it's only been a couple of years that I've been working with you, but every day I'm sort of realising or learning something new. And 
we've had conversations before and it's so quick now that I realize it's all coming from me. If I have, um, I wouldn't say I ever have an argument with anybody, but if there's somebody that maybe there's a bit of tension with that I've maybe spent a bit too much time with, um, the, you know, when you, when you spend a lot of time with somebody, you can feel them getting on your nerves and it, it really, they're not doing anything different. And I catch myself laughing at myself thinking, God, I would, I would, I would normally be annoyed about this, but there's nothing to just, it's hard to explain when, when you get into a state of, of annoyance with somebody in a relationship, you can almost get annoyed when they're breathing, when you're sat next to them, you know what it's like. And it's like, Oh God, but when you finally sort of realize that everything is coming from you, it's quite, it's, it's one, it's rebalancing, but two, it gives you the ability to be able to, to communicate on a level that is so much more clear. Um, there's always going to be sort of difficult people in life, but it's how, how we deal with them and it, are they actually difficult or are we seeing them as, as being difficult? So, for me, learning a lot about this has has really has really made everything a lot more peaceful um, to know that yeah, everything isn't quite as it seems if there are any insecurities and sort of fear and vulnerabilities that I might have seen before as coming from them actually it's it was always from me. And it, it puts you in a really nice place to, whether it's with relationships that you're already in or meeting new people, that there is, it, it does always come from a place of love. But is it that you're trying to get something? Or does, does that make sense, Miles? I feel like I'm sort of... No, total sense. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's... <sighs> What are you looking for that you don't already have? Because there isn't anything. Now, it's wonderful to be in a great relationship and, and, and be in love. But it's also can be relationships face challenges. So, you know, it, we, we can idealise what romance is. We can idealise what love is. But, you know, of course, for most people, they, they would love to be in a relationship or they are in a relationship. But it, you always have the potential for it to be seen from a deeper space. You always have the potential for to see something more to have more feeling now i i i'm around well, i haven't been around for a while because of covid but i used to be around a lot of the old school principals teachers so um as there's been people that have been teaching this you know, like psychologists and psychiatrists for maybe kind of 30 odd years and you see those guys in their relationships with their wives and there's a presence there's a there's a they, they show up in a really loving way and and, and they don't look like 30, 40 year old relationships. They look like new relationships. And that was always really fascinating to me. But it makes sense because, of course, they're going to show up like that because they're, 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 they've got presence. They are seeing that person in some way fresh in the moment. Because when you understand the principles, you're not bringing the past into everything all the time. So, again, that's another point that I haven't actually said. So a relationship can be much healthier because you're not dwelling on the past. You're not having an argument and going, well, what you said last week or what you did last year, because we know the past is done. The past is over. It's gone. There's just this present moment. So it, it doesn't, you know, of course, occasionally there's moments, but generally there's not a dwelling on the past. There's not an accusation. There's not a, well, you didn't do this or you didn't do that. There's very much a, a moment, a fresh moment. And, and the experience of that moment, which is very, very different because, you know, think about a lot of couples or people that are in relationships that you see and they're nitpicking at each other. You know, when I see those relationships, I'm like, oh, no, that, that doesn't sit well with me. That's like, oh, you know what? You could be really showing up in a loving way and they're not. They're, they're showing up in a way that is, is really kind of putting their partner down in some ways and, and all that is is a relationship that's lost. That relationship has the potential also to be a really good relationship, by the way, because I do relate, I, I, I do work with couples. 
And the change is amazing because once you begin to see that it's not personal and everything's coming from thought and you have everything you need, all that pressure comes off the relationship and the other person. So, so it, 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 it becomes instead of the area that you need to protect, it becomes the area that you need to dissolve, something that you need to see through. And all a strong reaction means is there's a lot of belief and there's a lot of identity still present. Again, so that again is an, a, another place where you can see more deeply. There, you know, we, a relationship shouldn't be somewhere where you have a fear for your survival. You know, again, going back to th this is really important. You know, it should be a safe space. You should know that everything that you need comes from you, but your relationship should also be a safe space. And if it's not, then that's something that needs addressing. So again, when we, you know, we're not saying here, oh yes, there's unconditional love and work on any relationship and every relationship has the potential to be great. You know, yes, we're saying that, but also with the caveat of if you're in an abusive relationship, you need to get out of it. That's really, really important. Um, so yeah, that, that, yeah, I, I totally get that, Gem. I, you know, it, it's, it's always us. It's always us, and it's so freeing to see that. Yeah, you, you know, I'm like sometimes I find it hard to to I go blah, 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 and then you put it into one sentence, and it sounds amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'm a bit blah, 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 tonight as well, though. To be fair, so good. that's all right. That's all right. We did have um, and anyone in the audience that if you had any questions that you wanted to ask, um, you're more than welcome to come up and request or or message me if you didn't want to speak. But um, one of our long time listeners and, and he said that he doesn't mind um, speaking about it. And I do think it will help some other people as well. Um, he he works away from home and he fosters children. So he's got, I think, three kids at home at the moment and think sometimes they're quite bad, badly behaved um teenagers sort of police have been involved where so they've sort of run off and and things and i i chat to him quite a bit and the, the advice that i give is the same advice as i would as if it was in a romantic relationship or a mother or father brother or sister you you're never going to have any control over that person and he feels very guilty he feels like a failure um and i can i, I can totally sort of sympathize with him um but I would love for you to just speak about you know how you can obviously it's hard with children but maybe sort of disconnecting yourself so that you can help as much as you can without really beating yourself up about it because I think that's really really important well I think all the points that we've gone over tonight really are relevant in any relationship it's seeing the other from from the, the the fact that they're coming from their state of mind and it's not personal if we don't let if we if we come from logic rather than emotion then it's people are much easier to deal with when they're in their emotion okay so so probably with these children if they're fostered they may have probably had a tough time already and they're, they're probably acting out through their emotions so i i, I would say try to be present Try to not react. Try to see it logically instead of emotionally. And maybe try to, to show them something about what we're talking about here that, you know, for, for them to be able to see that their past is over, that what they're reacting to is their minds in the moment can be really helpful. So I, I, I'd always point back to the principles because the nature of them is helpful for absolutely every human being on earth. So especially kids that have had a troubled past, for them to see something about their true nature, that they have everything that they need within them to be okay, might be pretty liberating. So rather than get into conflict or, you know, try and tell them how it is, you know, because we all know that when we come at somebody and we want to kind of tell them off or, you know, tell them what they should be thinking, that's it, that they're straight away going to go into resistance. But if he can come at them when 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 they've calmed down and maybe have a conversation about what we talk about, maybe that would be the most helpful thing. Yeah, that's that's really good advice. And um, yeah, anyone that is, is here, you're welcome to join our Telegram group. That's where we sort of have conversations and we can speak privately as well. We're not just here every week on Thursday. Um, we're also in our Telegram group, which is 
t.me forward slash unminding. Um, but it's just a really, really nice place to be able to share. I mean, there's quite a few of the of the crypto bros that have asked me today, Moles, um, how do I sort of, I've been out of the game for so long. There's a lot of people that got into crypto around the same time as us, sort of 2017, 2018. And for the last four years, a lot of them have been sat in their mum's basements. Um, they've now found they've got money, they've got, but they've, they, they don't have the sort of self-esteem and they, they don't go out very much. I've got a few people that are saying, you know, what, how do I get back into the game? How, how, how do I do that? I think that it's interesting, but I think for a lot, a lot of it is, going to be that they're believing a lot of things that aren't true about themselves so this insecure what's insecurity and insecurity is a thought that we believe that isn't true so again that that exploration of thought that seeing beyond our own thinking like if we're going to keep believing if thoughts sitting there telling us we're not good enough and we shouldn't go out and like no one's going to talk to us and if we keep believing that thinking that's where we're going to stay if we challenge thought and begin to see that, oh, that thought might not be true, maybe I should just go and experience life and, and see what happens and not be worried about rejection. You see, that's a, another big thing is people are terrified of rejection. And it's like, really, if can we ever really be rejected? You know, life's just giving us exactly what we need, which may appear as rejection, but truly, you know, we... we, we who we are is love. Can love actually be rejected? The, the personality, yeah, of course, you know, that that's going to take it personally. But it, it, there's something much deeper about who we really are that doesn't, doesn't actually need this, need this recognition from the world. It doesn't need to be okay. It doesn't need to be told it's okay by the world. It can go out knowing who it is. It, it's, it's like you don't have to be worthy of love. You, you, know, you don't have to try to be worthy of love because it's your nature. It's like, why would you have to be worthy of it when it's who you already are? So, so for people that are really stuck and 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 think, oh, they're not going to meet anybody, or maybe they 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 feel lacking in friends. It's just start to challenge your own thinking start to go out of your comfort zone start to do things that maybe you think you wouldn't do because you know you don't know what it's going to be like well you won't know till you try but the less scared of rejection you are the better it's going to be the easier it will be and the more you'll show up and you might be surprised at what, what you find and what you see that's out there so yeah that that would be my advice gems that's yeah, I know that's really interesting. And I think it's always important to be conscious that, you know, not going to because I know I've done it before in the past, not going into a relationship looking for something in someone else that you're, you're looking for sort of in yourself. Um, so I think that's that's quite important as well. I know Cecil has requested, I've been trying to accept him, but I don't know if you can, Miles, or, you, or if you're here. Hi, Soul. I've invited him to speak, so we'll see what happens. Oh. Um, yeah, it really goes back to that point earlier of, of what you're looking for that you don't already have. You know, it, it, it's all within us. You know, it, it's our cup runneth over. It's like the, we can't, we couldn't be any more full of love, but we hide it. We, we, we diminish it. We cover it up. And that cover is thought. It's thoughts that aren't true that we believe. Um, and thoughts and feelings. If you see, remember that thought and feeling is transitory. It's not. It's not set. So whatever that thought feeling is telling you in the moment isn't true. So that's really important to remember. Hi, Cecil. How are you, darling? Hello, Malls. Hello, Jim. I'm pretty well. Hey. How are you both? Good. Yeah. Good. Thank you, darling. Good. Very well. Nice to hear you. So we're talking about getting back in the game. We're talking about insecurity. Last week on our space, if you didn't check it out, we touched a bit on shyness. And I think that all kind of, I think it all kind of goes back to the same place. Like you were saying earlier, it's, it's, it's a story, it's a narrative, it's a thought that we're telling ourselves about ourselves, right? 
And um, I just wanted to share this um, little, I don't know what you call it, um, conversation I had with Jim whenever she first, like, uh, invited me to help out with unmining, right? And and so in my mind at the time, and again, this is a story that I'm telling myself, I, I was, like, really nervous to talk to Jim, right? And I, I, I was honest about that with her, you know, I said, I don't remember my exact words, but something along the lines of, I feel like I'm putting you on a pedestal of some sort. And she said, it isn't me that you're having an issue with. It's the story about me that you're telling yourself that you're having an issue with. And so I think if you take that and you apply it to getting back in the game or um, like you, you mentioned earlier, the fear of being rejected, it isn't the person that you are shy towards. It isn't the person that you are afraid of being rejected. It's, it's the story about the person that you're telling yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, that's such a great point. You know, it, it, and that's what it all always is. That's, you know, I go as far as to say that's every moment of every day is the story that we're telling ourselves about life, about the moment, about the relationship, about the person. That's always what's on the table. So what's great about that, it's always up for being seen differently. You know, it challenges our own mind. It challenges our own thought system. We don't have to believe it. It's like we don't have to think that. We can see it differently at any given moment. You know, it, it's, it's such an interesting understanding because it's, again, in the totality of it, it's everything about it is is showing us the untrue nature of rea- of what we perceive as reality, how it's always coming from us, how we can always see it differently. You know, it's like, what is true? You know, to see, to see beyond our experience, to see it, see it through the lenses of, of the fact that it, it may not be true is so much easier than everything being set and true and difficult. You know, we, we can go, okay, that's just how I'm seeing it. I know that the availability for change is always there. Um, and that's true for relationships. You know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be, a, it's, it doesn't have to be set. A relationship should be fluid. It should change. We should evolve together. You know, it, 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 it's it's not about having better beliefs about the other person or about the relationship. It's about seeing that all of our beliefs are made up, how it's all an illusion, how the experience of the other is coming from us all the time. Because then that that's, oh, that, that person, you know, I always find this interesting. Again, I, I said about it earlier, that person that you fell in love with is still the same person when you split up. But your experience of them has changed. We we can we can it, it, you know, like what you said to someone. Put someone on a pedestal. You've made up a story. You've fallen in love. You have all the chemicals. You put the person on the pedestal. They're perfect, and suddenly they become human and imperfect. And it's like oh, so you're not seeing them. You've always seen what you wanted to see. And 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 when they start to appear as human, when they start to you you see their flaws or they they act in a way you think, well, that you know, I didn't know they'd be like that. I didn't know they could be an arsehole. They're being an arsehole. They're supposed to be perfect. When you understand this, you know that we're all arseholes sometimes, and that you can go, oh, oh, bless them. They're just being an arsehole. They're just caught up in thought, and it just will it just it'll be nothing. It won't be something you have to react to. It might be something you have to dump them over. It'll just be, oh, okay, I get it. God, I act like that too sometimes. So I think someone put a question in earlier about I haven't found the one or the perfect one. And well, maybe it's because you're looking for something that's perfect, not something that's real. 
you know something that's real is much more valuable and and that is perfect in itself we just don't notice it so it it it, it just changes it up a bit it, it's what what great teachers relationships really are how how much we can see about ourselves through a relationship and how lost we've been by projecting our issues onto the other person and thinking we need to change them. I, you, you, yeah, we evolve together. Of course, you know, I want to be with someone that didn't evolve and want to reflect on themselves. And But, you know, I, I know I need to change just as much. You know, it, the, the change is on the table for the relationship and for both people in it. But it's not the old-fashioned, well, you need to do this so I'm okay. You need to change. It's like, well, no, we both just need to grow. Dif- different energy, you can feel it. You know, it, it, the insecurity when it looks like I'm not getting what I need isn't there. Or maybe it is there momentarily, but it falls away because I know I don't really need anything. So what is love? Love, it, like what love really is, is a free mind. Yeah, because love in it, in its purest state will not will not be affected by thought. The mind will be free. It's thought that comes in and, and, and clouds love and that puts requirements on it. You know, the personality, the ego does that. A free mind is unconditional love. And again, it's like if we can touch that in life, what a gift, how lucky we are. And I don't mean that just in a romantic relationship, in any relationship. You no, know, to, 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 to truly love really is, for me, what I see as the meaning of life. Um, and to allow yourself to be loved. We haven't really talked about that. What was that? So, so, people, so people protect themselves and... And they won't allow themselves to be loved. That's a really interesting topic. I'm not going to go deep into it now because we're nearly done. But, yeah, how interesting. You know, that that protection is so deep, you won't let yourself be loved. When it's the, what, the most beautiful thing in the world and the most natural thing in the world. It's unnatural to protect yourself from it. But, again, we're human and we get lost and we get caught up and... And, and, and we uh, and we feel insecure. We don't want to be rejected, and all the bullshit that goes with it. Um, but again, when we when we explore this, we see that falling in love is an ex- isn't external. It's an internal thing. Something is awoken from within. So we don't find love. We are love. And when we fall in love, what we're doing is we're remembering that we are love. Okay. So it, it's a recognition of who we are. Uh, and and that's, that's why it feels so good. That's why we love it so much. That's why, that's what, that's why people get hooked on it and seek it and, and, and think they're not okay without it. But when you know it's you, when you know it comes from you, when you know it's your true nature... Then you don't have to, to you don't have to try and grab it. You know it's who you are, and if it comes to you through another, if you experience that, good. And if you don't, good. All is as it's supposed to be. Gems. That's wonderful. I was, and I was just giggling to myself because I knew this would happen. Soul and I just quoted exactly the same thing that you, that you wrote about about thought coming in and clouding love and free mind being unconditional. I could feel him typing at the same time as me, but then I thought, nah. Now, but, which one of you do I retweet? No, <laughs> it's so true, um, and it's so like I've got the biggest smile on my face just listening to the last couple of minutes because. Any, any, I, I we've spoken about this before on calls, and I think it's a really good, a good one to speak about. Probably need more than an hour, but when you are in that state of protecting yourself from love because you're you're scared of it almost, and that's the point that I was at, and um, it's so freeing to be not necessarily vulnerable, but to to allow yourself and to know that any any experience that comes into your world is is meant for you and it's 
it's, it's life is just a lot more enjoyable. So thank you, um, first of all. And yeah, there's just a really nice, it was a really beautiful, peaceful feeling. Um, I don't know if Sol, you've got anything to say on, on that, but it, it allows you to move forward in life and everything is just extremely, extremely peaceful. Um, and I, yeah, I didn't ever think that it would, it would feel like this. And anyone who's in the conversation, if you've heard something tonight, keep listening because um, it definitely, definitely works. I'm living, breathing proof. So is Miles and lots of other people here. Um, and just really grateful to, to have you all. I don't really have much to say tonight, really, to be honest, Miles. I don't know if anyone's got any questions um, before we finish off. It's been just over an hour now. But as always, it's been wonderful just under an hour sorry no i'm I, i'm good to finish i'm really tired tonight um so yeah i've had a very very busy week um but it, i i i'd uh beautiful topic i mean we can carry it on another time as well um it, it, it's it's there's such a richness to, to talking about anything in the principles world but especially this subject i think and 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 that reflection on who we are um yeah just thank you all for being here obviously we couldn't do it without you you know you're 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 part of it you're you're here to experience it with us and for us to share it with and and it's so wonderful that you do show up and that you do listen to us um I will hand over to Jem to to finish off thank you yes um it has been a really, really interesting conversation tonight, and I've written a few sort of subtopics down that I think will be will be great for us. Um, but anyone has any ideas or any subjects, anything that you'd like to to sort of put on the table, you're free to join us in the group. Um, I've pinned up at the top a an article that Moles wrote, which has got many more of our episodes that we're just uploading to a website that we're making. So yeah, lots more to come from the Unminding Project. Um, this will always be free for everybody. Uh, it's really important to us that it's a come as you are party. So um, we understand that um, it's what it's like to feel lonely, to feel sad, um, all these different things. So know that you are not alone and there is always someone here for you. Um, we will be here at the same time this time next week and um, we do run on donations. We've been very grateful this week. We've received a lovely NFT from Nature. Nature's one of our newest, but one of our one of our greatest supporters actually has been really, really really lovely and um, wonderful so thank you very much nature um, I think we're going to have some playing out music uh, we've got our, our unminding soundtrack that Carl made for us we've just been you know this this project started organically maybe five months ago now and it's and it's growing so beautifully and yeah I just feel really grateful to all of you um, so thank you for all of your support and couldn't do without you and we'll, we'll see you next week and look forward to it thank you very much thank you everybody good night